Hello, everyone. My name is Alexander Kormishin, and I'm chairperson of the Brixis Energy Agency. It is my great pleasure to be a moderator for today's discussion on sustainable and inclusive municipal governments and businesses. The webinar is a part of the From Bricks with SDG campaign. It has been launched by SDG platform by Bricks Youth Energy Agency in partnership with the SDG 7 constituency of the United Nations Major Group for Children and Youth. Bricks YEA is an international youth organization which serves as a BRICS mandated consolidating counterparty in coordination with energy and youth authorities for all BRICS youth energy related matters. BRICS is a collaboration between five major emerging countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. It develops projects uh, aimed at raising awareness and strengthening BRICS energy cooperation at the youth level. This campaign addresses young people who make a day-to-day -day change by contributing to achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. This year, the theme of the campaign is Smart and Sustainable Cities. As we are making the fifth anniversary of adoption of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, Paris Agreement, and of the 2030 Agenda, cities need to become sustainable and energy efficient. And it is the youth who should take a lead as they are the ones who will be their future residents. The 2020 campaign shall provide young people from BRICS countries and beyond with insights from urban development experts and other youth practitioners, help share the vision and shape, shape best practices into policy recommendations to be introduced at the third BRICS Youth Energy Summit in Moscow on October 16, 2020. Firstly, I would like to draw your attention to the housekeeping rules of the webinar. Kindly turn off your microphones and cameras when not speaking. You can put your questions in the chat box for youth practitioners, while the questions for the keynote speaker have been pre-selected via survey. The questions will be asked at the dedicated Q&A session. The webinar will be recorded and posted on social media, including YouTube. Right now, the recording is on air on YouTube as well. I would like to use this opportunity to introduce to you the Youth Sustainable Energy Hub. Um, this is uh, the first of its kind global platform for youth action in sustainable energy created by SDG 7 Youth Constituency in partnership with SE for All, UNIDO, UNICEF, IEEE, PES, and Climate Tracker. We're calling on all youth practitioners to submit their project by September 30. The platform is open for a wide range of initiatives from research papers to startups, advocacy campaigns. Top 100 submissions will be featured on this global platform and benefit from a support network of the world's leading energy and climate organizations. For more support and information, please visit youthsehub.org. The organizers of the webinar would like to invite young people to virtually participate in the BRICS Energy Agency Summit to take place on October 16, 2020, and the BRICS Festival on Energy Efficiency and Energy Saving Together Brighter on October 10, 2020. More information will be, um, will be allocated on the BRICS YEA website starting from tomorrow. Moving on, without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce to you the first keynote speaker, His Excellency, Mr. Ilsur Metchen. Mr. Ilsur Metchen has been the head of administration of Kazan since 2006. He was elected president of the United Nations Advisory Committee of Local Authorities, UNECLE, in November 2019 at the sixth Congress of UGMW. So, Good afternoon, Mr. Ilsul Machen. Dobry dzień. Good afternoon. Uh, the floor is yours. And we are really happy to have you here. Дорогие друзья, я вас приветствую. Благодарю организаторов мероприятия за приглашение выступить в качестве эксперта в рамках акции молодежного энергетического агентства БРИКС. Это прекрасная возможность в сфере часы обсудить сложившуюся в мире непростую обстановку поделиться 
нашим опытом противостояния новым угрозам и ведения стратегии устойчивого развития. В текущий год представительство России в БРИКС, на которое запланировано проведение многочисленных совместных мероприятий, в том числе и в Казани, мы оказались в непростых условиях. Вместе с тем мы настроены на эффективную работу в Казани в рамках форума породненных городов, муниципальных образований стран БРИКС. В октябре, вне зависимости от формата мероприятий, и будем рады участию в нем представителей вас, дорогие наши молодые коллеги энергетического агентства БРИКС. Местные власти и их администрации находятся на передовой борьбы с внезапно возникшим кризисом, вызванным COVID. От оперативности и взвешенности наших решений ни много ни мало зависит жизнь людей, их безопасность, благосостояние. Пандемия изменила глобальный контекст выполнения целей устойчивого развития, в том числе придав концепции умного, умного города новые смыслы. Мы столкнулись с совершенно новой и крайне опасной для всех реальностью. Ограничения, связанные с распространением вируса, стали серьезным испытанием для городской экономики, но безопасность жизни людей – самый высший приоритет. Если раньше под безопасностью мы понимали в первую очередь спокойную мирную обстановку, соблюдение законов, общественных договоренностей, то в эпоху ковид и постковид акцент сместился на обеспечение санитарной безопасности, создание условий для соблюдения гигиены во избежание угрозы здоровью горожан. И нам всем на протяжении еще долгого времени нужно будет находить пути для адекватного и оперативного решения этих задач. Параллельно необходимо предпринимать серьезные усилия для преодоления экономического кризиса, что требует сконцентрированности и сплоченности на всех уровнях. Во избежание распространения инфекции в республике в городе был введен особый режим. Это потребовало от нас совершенно нестандартных решений. Многие организации и предприятия были переведены на работу в удаленном режиме, так же, как во всем мире, а в школах и других учебных заведениях мы ввели дистанционное обучение. Было ограничено движение общественного транспорта, въезд в город из-за пределов. Для демотивации населения находиться на улицах мы даже ограничили электрическое освещение улиц в вечернее время и общественных пространств. Важный роль в контроле нежелательных передвижений по городу жителей в апреле и мае текущего года сыграла система электронных пропусков. Вместе с тем, с первых дней мы ввели жесткий контроль за уровнем цен на продукты, первой необходимости лекарства и соблюдение новых правил посещения торговых объектов. Оперативно наладили работу волонтерских служб для помощи одиноким пожилым гражданам и людям, которые оказались в сложной жизненной ситуации. Социальные учреждения запустили новые онлайн-сервисы для различных целевых аудиторий. Многие культурные, образовательные проекты проводились в онлайн-формате. Повседневная проведенная работа по цифровизации муниципальных услуг позволила горожанам продолжать получать их без посещения учреждений. Сильнее всего в городской экономике пострадал малый и средний бизнес, поэтому мы сразу же приняли решение в его поддержку. Мы наложили мораторий на штрафы, отсрочили плату за аренду имущества, земли, установку, эксплуатацию рекламных конструкций. Мы расширили и разрешили бесплатное размещение летних веран, выделили гранты для представителей самозанятых, перестроили режим работы муниципального паркинга. Эти мероприятия позволили бизнесу сэкономить по предварительным оценкам совокупности порядка 760 миллионов рублей или в эквиваленте там, 10 миллионов евро. В ответ бизнес не остался в стороне, значительное число наших предприятий в самый пик кризиса помогли нуждающимся продуктовыми наборами, медикаментами, средствами гигиены, бесплатным транспортом. Сложившаяся ситуация заставляет нас сосредоточить внимание на новых возможностях, на том, что можно и нужно изменить в современных городах. Особенно в технологическом развитии я вижу в этом позитивную сторону текущей ситуации. В этом году мы утвердили программу энергосбережения и повышения энергоэффективности Казани до 2024 года. Создание условий для повышения эффективности использования энергоресурсов становится сейчас одной из приоритетных задач и является залогом конкурентоспособности. В Казани ежегодно проводится работа по реализации энергосберегающих мероприятий. Например, за время реализации предыдущей программы во всех муниципальных учреждениях было установлено новое современное энергоэффективное оборудование и налажен стопроцентный учет 
потребляемых энергоресурсов. Там, где эти технически возможны и экономически целесообразно, установлены узлы погодного регулирования тепловой энергии, теплообменники с устройством регулирования. В целях продолжения совершенствования системы уличного освещения в городе, которая является значимым социальным фактором, определяющим удовлетворенность населения уровня жизни, в текущем году планируется реализация энергосервисного контракта с системой уличного освещения Казани. Данная работа позволит сэкономить потребление электрической энергии и значительно улучшить его качество. Ежегодно благодаря программам удается существенным образом повысить качество освещения Казани. Предприятие городского хозяйства Казани проводится энергосберегающим мероприятия. Для реализации энергосберегающих мероприятий мы активно привлекаем бизнес-сообщество. Так, на объектах спорта реализуются энергосервисные контракты по замене старых светильников на светодиодные. Цифры говорят сами за себя. Мы уделяем вопросу света большое внимание, прирастаем количеством светоточек, поскольку вопросы освещения остаются очень актуальными для наших жителей. Отдельно стоит отметить реализацию проекта по переходу на газомоторное топливо. Переход на него отражается и в снижении затрат на само топливо, и, конечно же, уменьшение вредных выбросов. Несмотря на более высокую стоимость, газовые автомобили окупаются быстрее дизельных аналогов и приносят больше доход. Наша республика является одним из лидеров в России по количеству приобретенной техники на газомоторном топливе. И всего в Татарстане мы приобрели 1200 транспортных средств. На сегодня это 15% наших пассажирских перевозок. Несмотря на большую проделанную, на проделанную работу, нужно отметить, что применение любых энергосберегающих технологий, как правило, сопряжено с высоким уровнем культуры потребления и экологического сознания населения. Жители самых продвинутых с точки зрения энергетики городов мира с детства приучаются... ...к эффективному использованию ресурсов воды, тепла и электричества. Поэтому мы ставим перед собой задачу повысить общую культуру потребления энергоресурсов в городе. Начиная с 2016 года в Казань принимает участие в организации проведения российского фестиваля «Вместе ярче». И в фестивале приняли участие порядка 15 тысяч человек. Это сотрудники предприятий, студенты, вузы, школьники, жители города. В Казани существует практика. Все наши младшие классы получают подарок экологический дневник, в котором на простом, доступном для детей языке объясняются принципы экономного потребления и, энерги... и энергоэффективности. Большая пояснительная, разъяснительная работа проводится в СМИ, активная социальная реклама. Но каждая новая реальность требует корректировки ранее разработанных программ устойчивого развития. Мы проделали эту работу и ставим перед собой задачи, направленные на то, чтобы сделать городскую среду еще более комфортной, безопасной, умной, доброй. Это позволит стать городом с равными возможностями для всех, в котором хочется жить, учиться, трудиться и созидать. Сейчас как никогда важным становится обмен опытом, тиражирование лучших мировых практик по реализации повестки дня в области устойчивого развития и обозначенных целей устойчивого развития. Благодарю за приглашение поделиться нашим видением и верю, что совместные усилия обеспечат создание возможностей для формирования здорового и жизненного будущего в комфортных, умных городах. Желаю всем участникам здоровья, благополучия, надеюсь на новые встречи. Жду вас в Казани, дорогие наши молодые коллеги, и благодарю за внимание. Thank you very much, Mr. Machen, for your very insightful uh, presentation. Um... We would like to ask you some questions that we have collected from our participants by a, a press selection of 30. So the first question is, could you please comment on the role of preparation for major sports yeah, that... events like 27th University 2013, FIFA World Cup in creating sustainable and efficient urban environment? 
This question has come from South Africa. Спасибо за вопрос. Очень важно в растущих городах придумывать некие челленджи, которые объединяют усилия местных региональных властей и объединяют вокруг какой-то идеи обязательно население, в том числе молодежь. Для нас универсиада и проведенный после этого чемпионат мира по футболу это не только изменение городской инфраструктуры, когда мы построили новый аэропорт, железнодорожный вокзал, новые отели, новые мосты, дорожные развязки и большое количество стадионов. Мы стали другими. Это самый главный, главный изменение, самое главное наследие, которое мы получили. Выросло целое поколение молодых ребят. Во-первых, они у нас была большая армия волонтеров. Порядка 53 тысяч волонтеров принимали участие за эти мероприятия. Мы их теперь встречаем по всему миру. Наши ребята молодые, каждый на своем направлении. Кто-то отвечал за туризм, кто-то за питание, кто-то за транспорт, кто-то за размещение. По пяти континентам разъехались друзья нашего города, нашей страны. Очень важно придумать такие масштабные мероприятия, как говорится, big Wave lift all the balls. Вот большая волна поднимает все лодки. Вот вам обязательно нужно придумывать в ваших городах, на ваших континентах какие-то челленджи, которые э, поднимут не только инфраструктуру, но самое главное энергию всего города. Мы проснулись после этих мероприятий другим людьми. И проснулись не только с любовью к своему городу и гордостью, но и с верой в то, что нам многое по плечу. А нашим молодым ребятам, волонтерам, специалистам, которые в разных областях были организаторами вместе с нами этих международных событий, они поняли, что они могут быть успешными и полезными по всему миру. Я считаю, что это самый главный, наверное, роль, которая сыграла вот эти проведения наших больших международных событий. И мы теперь не боимся ни за что браться. Мы можем и Олимпиаду выиграть, и АТС, и... Ну, я надеюсь, что мы встретим БРИКС в полном составе с лидерами, в том числе с молодыми у себя в Казани. Спасибо, Александр. Спасибо. Uh, the second question um, is coming from India. Uh, Kazan is one of the leading Russian cities in terms of sustainable development. What United Nations sustainable development goals, in your view, are the most difficult ones to achieve in the city, and why? Спасибо за вопрос. Я думаю, во-первых, все цели устойчивого развития, которые провозглашены Организацией Объединенных Наций, очень важны. Но если спрашивать на сегодняшний день, что для меня, как для мэра, самое тяжелое, наверное, это то, что связано с экологически эффективным и безопасным накоплением твердых бытовых отходов. Тяжелее всего люди меняют свои привычки. И мы выросли несколько поколений, когда мы в одно ведро бросали и полиэтилен, и стекло, и батарейки, и все остальное. И представляете, ну вот если вы правую ложку, правой рукой ложку каждый день держите, и вдруг вам говорят, что правильно, теперь левый, а вам там 30-40 лет. Вот привычки труднее всего менять. Мы сейчас переходим на дуальный сбор мусора, это на две фракции. И в каждом дворе, а представьте, у меня миллион триста тысяч населения, и теперь людям надо привыкать к тому, что мусор надо разделять как минимум на две, а лучше на три фракции. Поэтому вот это самый большой на сегодняшний день челлендж. И мы начинаем строить завод по термической обработке мусора. Мы хотим перейти уже в ближайшие годы на нулевое захоронение и тем самым стать в ряд тех городов в мире, которые э, побороли этот вопрос. Поэтому спасибо нашей индийской коллеге за этот вопрос. И если спрашивать, вот номер один у меня на сегодняшний краткосрочной задачи, это 2-3 года, наверное, ближайших, это из тех целей, ООН, которая цель устойчивого развития, вот этот вопрос. Но я надеюсь, мы победим. 
Спасибо большое. The other question comes from China, Beijing. In order to make a positive change, the position of mayor implies leading. By example, personally, have you changed anything in your lifestyle so as to encourage other city residents to follow? No, начнем с того, что нормальный человек продолжает меняться в течение всей жизни и учиться и меняться. Но так, чтобы быть, ну, мэр вообще должен быть показательным во всем. И Казань сохраняет естественный прирост. Мы один из динамично развивающихся городов, и у нас количество рождающихся детей, ну, в среднем, на 50% естественный прирост превышает убыль. И в этом плане я один из примеров. У меня четверо детей, поэтому я подаю своим и вам, молодые люди, всех, кто сегодня нас слушает. Берите пример с меня и с моей супруги. У нас четверо детей. Поднимите руку, у кого больше. Вот, поэтому... Ну и, конечно, здоровый образ жизни. Если еще 10 лет назад в Казани только 18,7% занималось ежедневно спортом, вели здоровый образ жизни, то этот год мы начали с цифрой, которой я очень горжусь. Уже 50% жителей моего любимого города Казань занимаются ежедневно спортом, ведут активный спортивный образ жизни. И я в том числе являюсь в этом плане примером. Я еженедельно играю или в хоккей, или в футбол, в том числе за команду ветеранов в свободное от работы естественное время. Ну и в целом стараюсь поддерживать себя в такой спортивной форме, чтобы походить на свою молодую столицу. Надеюсь, у меня это получается. Yes, this is really great. Um, and uh, that's all for the questions for today. And uh, taking into consideration your schedule, we all would like to thank you for your being here. I would like to inform you that after you we have a uh, a representative of the Sao Paulo um, Mayor's Hall and also a representative of the uh, Moscow uh, Agency of Innovations. Mm -hmm. After that, we will have policy recommendations which will be presented at the BRICS YEA Summit, the BRICS Youth Energy Agency Summit, and also the BRICS Forum of Municipalities in St. Petersburg. So, um, the second speaker, uh, his name is Bruce Roberto Shadow Campos. He is from Brazil. And uh, uh, Mr. Campos coordinates issues related to international corporations of the municipality of Sao Paulo, including cooperation with BRICS countries and intermunicipal cooperation. In 2019, he spoke among the developers of the BRICS Energy Outlook, which is developed by BRICS Energy Agency. His team was recognized as the best and was awarded by the Minister of Energy of the Russian Federation and the Minister of Science and uh, Higher Education of the Russian Federation. He was a member of the organizing committee of the 21st Economic Week Regional Economy and Sustainable Development at the State University of Londria, Brazil. He was a member of the organizing committee of the development of the BRICS Journey 2018 at the University of Sao Paulo. Besides, he was co-organized the UNICEF Unicamp uh, POC SP Research Symposium on. Bruce, it's very great to see you here today. And um, the floor is yours uh, for your presentation. You are free to switch it on and uh, welcome. Thank you, uh, my friend Alex Kpormishin for the invitation to participate uh, and share best practices uh, between municipal governments. Uh, I also greet Honorable Mr. Ilusur Mechin, uh, Mayor of Kazam, and Evgenia Parinova from the Moscow Agency of Innovation. Um, um, now, uh, I would like to, to share my, my presentation. Uh, just a sec. Well, um, 
first, uh, I would like to, to introduce some numbers of Sao Paulo. Uh, the city has a population of 12 million people and its metropolitan area has more than 21 million. Uh, the city alone is responsible for 10% of Brazilian GDP, which is about $126.5 billion. The city is Brazil's economic and financial center and the largest city in, of Latin America and South Hemisphere. The service sector is responsible for 70% of the formal jobs in the city, which is about 3.4 million people uh, out of a uh, total workforce of about 4.9 million workers. Uh, the increasing role of the municipal government in global changes, uh, challenges uh, increase our responsibility in inserting local demands in, in, the, in the national agenda and global governance mechanisms. The 11 SDG consists on making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. The sustainable development perpass the local decision-making and therefore the municipal government uh, become key actors for its implementation. Sao Paulo is part of it and has intensified its actions towards sustainable development. Currently, the city is institutionally committed in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. It's several policy guidelines towards these goals, such the, as the goals program that contemplates the priorities of the municipal management based on the government plan of the elected mayor and the strategic master plan. Another institutional instrument is the pluriannual uh, plan, the PPA, that is also linked to the Sustainable Development Goals. It is the central budget uh, planning instrument. The PPA aims to provide transparency in the application of resources and the results obtained during the administration. In 2008, the 2030 Agenda was ratified by the City Council as a guideline for Sao Paulo's public policies by the Municipal Program for an Implementation of 20, 2030 Agenda for the Sustainable Development of the United Nations. Additionally, it determines uh, the creation of the Municipal Commission for Sustainable Development. It is a deliberative body with uh, the participation of the civil society for decision-making in public policies related to this agenda. Its mission is to elaborate the action plan for the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Uh, consequently, Sao Paulo becomes a world reference in municipalization of the UN objectives for sustainability. Uh, the next slide uh, concerns the, the city policies in, in the institutional dimension. Currently, the 2030 Agenda is a guideline for public policies as a, uh, and as a result, uh, to enforce the commitment with the SDGs uh, by dissemination of knowledge on this matter among the city hall's employees, uh, we have the Municipal School of Public Administration of Sao Paulo uh, which offers uh, training in line with the needs of the city and promotes courses related to the sustainable development goals. Uh, also, the Open University of the Environment and Culture of Peace as a governing body of the municipal environmental education policy promotes and ensures the environmental edu education in the city. Sao Paulo has also established a new primary education curriculum, uh, which includes the 2030 agenda in an um, unprecedented way, uh, relating its learning objectives to each of the 17 SDGs. Every document of the municipal school system linked, is linked to the SDGs. 
in the economic dimension, there is, uh, there is the municipal plan uh, for agroecology and sustainable and solidarity rural development that aims to integrate the several existing public policies which addresses which address the uh, this issue by improving in the set of actions for the promotion of food security and nutritional um, food sovereignty strategic territorial development development and the human rights uh, to adequate food from the perspective of rural and areas and urban agriculture. The municipal program to tackle waste uh, and food loss uh, aims to collect fruits and vegetables in good condition for consumption that would be discarded and donate them to institutions that serve people in a situation of food insecurity. Uh, the, the Connect the Dots uh, program aims to promote the sustainable development of the rural territory and improve its relations with the, the urban environment. This program's mission is to promote the social environmental uh, sustainability of the rural territory in the south of Sao Paulo by strengthening uh, local agriculture. Um, the, the uh, Sao Paulo's Municipal Economic Development Plan uh, prescribes actions to, to promote sustainable, inclusive, and competitive uh, economic development in the municipality for the next 10 years. Uh, uh, the, local, the local economic uh, development program is part of a strategy uh, to promote the creation of jobs and income, considering the vocations of the territory and stimulating the creation of productive change chain, in less privileged regions of Sao Paulo. Uh, we have also the ADESAMPA, which is Sao Paulo Development Ad Agency, that promotes development policies in order to reduce regional inequalities, improving competitiveness of the economy, the creation of jobs, promoting uh, entrepreneurship and technological innovation. Uh, TEA policy is an initiative that offers a network of public co-workings for entrepreneurs who does not have access because of the, the high cost of these spaces. The main, the Mais Mulheres program, uh, which means more women program, aims to promote the development of social, emotional, and entrepreneurial skills through the female emp empowerment for women uh, from region of great social vulner vulnerability uh, who are entrepreneurs and want to improve their business. The Green Sampa program aims to map green initiatives in the city uh, through, through a platform the entrepreneurs can register his startup and present uh, the technological solutions that can contribute to the city's programs. It works as a map of green technology in the city. The intention of, of this program is to transform Sao Paulo into a, uh, the largest and the most important hub for environmental businesses and clean techs in South America, welcoming uh, companies and investors from all over the world, creating jobs and opportunities for entrepreneurs of all sizes. Lastly, uh, the Fab Lab <coughs> Livre <coughs> SP Network is uh, an initiative of the City Hall, which promotes uh, digital inclusion by democratizing access and empower empowering uh, citizens in digital manufacturing technologies. Currently, the, the, chains, uh, the chain has 12 digital manufacturing laboratories strategically uh, distributed in the territory. Three uh, are in the central region of the city and nine on the outskirts of the city where, where we verified uh, uh, more cases of vulnerability. It has contributed to the municipalization of the 23rd agenda as well. 
uh, the last topic is a pilot project that Sao Paulo uh, has, uh, also have an important policy on reduction of pollutants in the city through the public transport. There is a legislation about the substitution of the municipal bus fleet uh, for less polluting ones. This policy has a huge impact in the environment because the public transport uh, fleet has more, uh, has more than 13,370 few motor vehicles. The vehicle fleet to be replaced must be composed of new units equipped with propellants or fuels with less pol uh, polluting uh, impact than the replaced conventional one. Uh, within a maximum of 10 years, there must be a minimum reduction of 50%. And within the maximum of 20 years, a reduction of 100% of total emissions uh, of carbon dioxide, uh, of also origin for sure, uh, in relation to the total emissions of the fleets. In this concern, currently, there is a pilot project of uh, with uh, 18 electric buses, 100% uh, battery buses that are being used in the public transport system to test the viability of these vehicles in the city. It is uh, actually a pioneer project in Brazil. Now the last part is uh, concerning the international cooperation with BRICS countries at bilateral levels. Uh, with China, uh, we have a cooperation uh, with the city of Shanghai, which is the sister city of Sao Paulo since uh, 1988. Uh, and we conduct several cooperation projects in culture uh, culture, education, and business. And also uh, with Russia, we, we've had uh, recently uh, educational exchange uh, with uh, receiving delegations here in Sao Paulo and, and also uh, a Brazilian delegation to Moscow uh, to participate in the International Educational Week uh, in two, in two, uh, 2019 and with India we we have projects uh, of promotion of yoga classes for the population and students in the public educational system uh, also uh, what's next it is uh, it is mandatory that uh, BRICS municipalities to to cooperate and increase the interaction through to several me several means of of cooperation and exchanging Ex like exchanging experiences and 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 celebrating uh, international agreements and and sharing common problems and solutions i have uh, the last the last topic about uh, a call to action it's about the importance of international cooperation actions at the municipal level and strengthen local sustainable and inclusive uh, development. The city of Sao Paulo has, uh, is wide open to, to improve cooperation between uh, other BRICS uh, countries and its municipalities concerning the SDGs uh, to, to strengthen the, the grouping cooperation uh, within municipalities. So uh, that's uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. And for my Russian friends, Spasiba Balshoi. Bruce, thank you very much for your presentation. It was such a great honor to have you here today. Um, in line with the uh, other youth practitioner who is a Guinea Paraneva. Um, so right now we're going to the next speaker who is also a youth practitioner working um, for the well-being of Moscow 
the capital of the Russian Federation. Her name is Yevgenia Barinova. She graduated from the Moscow State Institute of International Relations of the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and also the Diplomatic Academy. She completed her studies at the School of Youth Diplomacy of the Mgimo University in 2010 and 11. She has successfully defended the project to the importance of tolerance in international youth cooperation. She was a participant of scientific conferences, 10th Convent of the Russian Academy of Medical Science, 25th Years of the Russian Foreign Policy, 4th Eurasian Youth Innovation Contents, uh, Convent, and others. Um, in 2017, she was a member of the Moscow delegation to the 19th World Festival of Youth and Students in Sochi. This is a city in the south of Russia. Currently, she holds the position of the head of division in the Moscow Agency of Innovations. So I would like to invite Ms. Evgenia Bar Barinova to show up and deliver her presentation in line with our keynote speaker and uh, youth practitioner from sub -Halo. The floor is yours, Evgenia. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me to act as a speaker. I'm very happy to be with you today and I hope that my practice will help you in the future. I will show my presentation first. Is it on? It's visible. Yeah, thank you. So, um, the topic that uh, will be discussed during today's webinar is uh, sus sustainable development, a topic which has taken the global arena by storm and has an exceptional importance in the upcoming future for us. In my speech, I would like to expand on the topic on, uh, of the open city governments and which uh, implies uh, the active implementation of various services and projects in the city of Moscow, where the Moscow government involves residents in solving urban problems. Yeah. Uh, the first project is called the Active Citizen, a government developed mobile application. Among the main task or tasks of the project is to obtain uh, opinions from citizens on topical issues related to the development of the city. Uh, in the app, uh, every Moscow resident can vote on the project evaluate city novelties and participate in public discussions every day, every time. The second project is the crowdsourcing platform uh, of the Moscow government. The project allows residents uh, to offer their ideas on the given topic, comment, discuss, refine and choose the most suitable odds, which are ultimately uh, taken by the authorities to implement. That's a very important point. The third project is called the City Portal. On this portal, each resident can describe any problem related to the urban economy, after which the City Council aims to eliminate the issue. It is possible not only to describe the problem and attach a photo, but also to see the end result. To the second part of my speech, I would like to, it is dedicated to my current employment and our projects. Uh, at, uh, I work uh, at the Moscow in Innovation Agency, which has been founded to support companies engage in innovation and technology only. It has a direct correlation to the development level of the smart city. Uh, all our projects are aimed at making innovative solutions more accessible to urban and commercial companies, as well as providing support. Uh, the first project is a map of innovative solutions. Uh, it is an open platform for hosting and seeking innovation. Uh, currently, there are 1,544 solutions 
uh, that are already been placed on uh, the platform. And the portfolio is still growing as we speak. One might say that it's a marketplace for innovations. The second project is the pilot testing program. Uh, the agency helps uh, the startups and small projects in large urban and commercial um, sites. For more, if the solution proves to have potential, uh, the agency agrees to pilot this solution. The service is free for all parts. Uh, this, is, this is a great opportunity to get early feedback from prospective buyers and market experts uh, about your product. The third project and the final one here is uh, Future Tech. Uh, our team have uh, created a large crowdsourcing platform for startups and small businesses where they can ask specialists for help on any issue and get solutions thereby finishing their product to perfection or it also creates uh, the means to finding a new team member uh, with a more diverse background for example we always try to generate new projects to support innovative solutions we involve students and citizens uh, to our projects i hope that my practice will help you and you will find something interesting for you and maybe you can uh, make your own project but very close to us and we can cooperate and help and uh, give everything we have in our mind and in our practice thank you Thank you very much, Evgenia. It was really great to hear from you, um, especially your presentation. It was really, really great. And um, right now we're moving to the discussion part. Um, that is uh, right now supposed for the questions for youth practitioners. And uh, we've got a question for Bruce. The first question goes to Bruce from our YouTube viewer. So the question is, Bruce, how do municipalities tackle the problem of increased electricity when the electric buses are introduced? And how can municipalities say that e-buses are a sustainable transport if the electricity to charge them often comes from uns uh, unsustainable sources of energy? What do you think about that? Well, thank for for the question. Uh, Actually, this is a, a concern of the, the municipal government of Sao Paulo uh, to make this, this transition uh, a sustainable one. Uh, for the, the, to supply this, this energy uh, demand uh, for future electric buses uh, which for such a huge fleet, um, we have uh, uh, um, a solar power farm in the in the city in the city of Arasatuba and the São Paulo state, which provides the 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 energy exclusively for the public transport, and and it will be multiplied with the time as the the fleet uh, is being replaced. So it's a uh, so that it can become uh, more sustainable. And I think uh, I answered the question. I have another part. Let me see. The second part is that can municipalities say that e buses are sustainable transport if electricity comes from traditional sources of energy? Oh, yes. So that's the, that's the idea. Uh, if the, the energy comes from fossil fossil uh, sources, uh, the all the all the investments in 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 emission reductions uh, from the buses uh, will be lost. So uh, the idea is to create a a, a chain which uh, the solar power 
into in this these solar farms in the countryside mostly can uh, supply it uh, concerning the the um, the the autonomy of the buses in a such huge city like Sao Paulo, uh, that's the that's the object of the project pilot. Uh, the the autonomy of of each bus is around two hundred and fifty uh, kilometers, and it's it is uh, quite adapted to the the buses line in in, in Sao Paulo. And in one charge of four hours, the bus can 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 run in the city almost the the whole day. Thank you Ruth, very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your very profound answer. Uh, the other question goes to Evgenia. Um, Evgenia, could you please answer it? How can a student energy project? qualified to be chosen and supported by your municipality? And what might be your advice to other municipalities in other BRICS countries for them to find and support an, an uh, innovative solution from the public? What do you think about that? We have one, uh, I have one example from my practice. We have one uh, company, it's a startup from Skolkovo and uh, it's uh, connected with uh, the energy and she always asks us um, for help and she asks students for help because now they have uh, more ideas they can make um, some solutions easily and uh, that's why i think that students should be involved in each uh, type in each process uh, they can help us, help uh, other government, I mean, help gov government to support these startups with their ideas. That's why they should be always uh, some there close to us with their ideas and, of course, help. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the other question uh, I would like to address to Bruce. So um, this question comes to, uh, from uh, Nithi uh, Chauhan. And the question is the following. While the city strive for sustainable development, the sewage and waste handling become the most ignored issues. At the same time, this and end up becoming major setbacks in the development of the city. Do city developers currently have any developing solution to address this problem? Uh, thank you for the for the question. Actually, uh, as the the city hall is working closely with the with two uh, with two uh, companies that manage the 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 waste the waste management in the city to to address it. And there is no longer uh, there is no longer the 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 former uh, the former way to to waste it uh, by 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 burying it uh, under the floor, and and uh, you are working closely with uh, other international um, international experiences to 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 use it to transform into energy, but it's in a, just a, a, a start, and in the following days we it will be developed. Uh, more more profoundly but it's it is uh it is in the in the projects and and it it's been addressed okay okay thank you very much and i guess we've got two more questions left uh before we start the webinar uh the workshop sorry and uh the first question um, I'd like to address to uh, Eugenia and here is a question um, about actually not addressed to anyone but I hope that you have the answer uh, so what is your comment on of a youth practitioner about nuclear energy um, 
and um, its need in the future to meet the growing demand for energy needs. And uh, actually, what's uh, your approach, um, the approach of Moscow Agency of Innovations to the uh, different to different projects, energy projects uh, that are linked with um, generation from nuclear energy sources? What do you think about that? Uh, I can say that we always support projects, startups, and small companies which are connected with energy and especially this solar en energy, wind energy, and everything that can help uh, us and I mean especially on other uh, ecology in future. That's why um, our specialists always try to find something new uh, in this ecosystem. I mean uh, the energy and the solar energy and so on. Okay. And now there oh. are some actually that so uh, they support and they get um, we gave them money uh they can uh, reach and develop faster okay Evgenia, thank you very much and i guess we've got the very last question to bruce this time uh, this question comes from one of our online attendees uh, the question is, uh, dear Mr. Shelley Campos, in your speech you have mentioned that one of the four priorities for Sao Paulo is safety. Knowing that safety is still an issue in the city, have the city authorities resorted to one of the most debated smart city technology, face recognition systems? I know that this is quite a challenge for Moscow. We've heard about that a lot. So what is it like in Sao Paulo? Well, uh, for Sao Paulo is is also a challenge. I think it's it's it is the same for the mostly uh, uh, the big uh, cities in the world like Moscow. Uh, in Sao Paulo, uh, actually, the city is working uh, with it in the recent years very very with very good results and. Uh, the municipal secretariat of urban security uh, works with uh, uh, Chinese technology of uh, face recognition uh, cameras around the city. Uh, it is it has been installed uh, in in strategic areas, and uh, the the municipal authorities can can already. Um, use face recognition in, in some areas, especially when we have uh, big events, because Sao Paulo uh, receives lots of huge events uh, with uh, tens of thousands of people uh, on the streets every year, and it's increasingly important to, to, to improve the face recognition technology, and uh, I think now it's uh, four or five uh, thousand cameras uh, uh, are around the city, uh, but in the following years uh, it will uh, uh, surely increase. So we're managed. We're managing this in this way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bruce. Um, I would like to note that um, at the moment uh, we've got statistics about our webinar and we've got more than 100 unique views uh, from BRICS countries and beyond. We would like to ask everyone who is watching us via YouTube, please join us in, in the Zoom as long as we are moving to the workshop. Once again, I would like to thank uh, our keynote speaker, Mr. Ilsor Matshin, and also our youth practitioners, Mr. Bruce Campus, uh, Shadow, and also Eugenie Parinova for being with us today and sharing their best practices of their cities. Um, the next step is about the workshop where youth practitioners will develop policy recommendations and also do some activities that will be presented as part of the official event of the Russian Chairmanship in BRICS in 2020, the BRICS Youth Energy Summit. 
and also the outcomes of this campaign 2020 will be delivered uh, at the BRICS um, Forum of Municipalities in St. Petersburg in November. So thank you very much. Everyone is free to stay in this room as long as the workshop will be right here. And I would like to give a word to my assistant, uh, Chairperson Mr. Arseniy Kyrgyzov-Barsky and the team to hold the workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alexander. And uh, in uh, one minute, we start uh, our workshop. I would like to uh, thank once again youth uh, practitioners to uh, uh, having participate for having participated in uh, the webinar and uh, remind you that you are free to stay in the workshop to participate in this interactive part, part with our uh, participants and help them to work with their recommendations. And uh, I would like to give the word to Vadim Kuznetsov, who is going to lead uh, this workshop. And it is going to be a more uh, an interactive part uh, uh, where you will be able to give your proposals or ask uh, or, or discuss the questions that haven't been asked uh, during the webinar uh, and share you, uh, your ideas on the topic. So Vadim, uh, the floor is yours. Um, thank you, Arseni. I would like to greet uh, on my behalf um, everyone in, in this chamber and also all the viewers on YouTube who are watching our live stream. Um, it is my greatest pleasure to announce that the workshop is um, open. And um, uh, first of all, I would like to give some clarifications on uh, what procedure we are going to adhere to. Um, this workshop is going to be a bit different in comparison to the previous one, in case anyone in the room has participated in the last workshop we held. Uh, it is going to be a more interactive one, and uh, we hope that it will also be joyful and insightful. Uh, the uh, only uh, digital um, uh, innovation uh, we have inserted in order to make this webinar an insightful and a joyful one um, is a digital platform uh, which is called Mentimeter and uh, right now I would ask all the participants present to um, to um, use their uh, devices whether it is um, a computer uh, or um, a phone or any other device um, and yes i yeah i see there is someone who has already uh, typed in the name of the city he or she comes from it's moscow and it is actually um, the first um, stage of our workshop it's aimed at uh, letting us uh, know each other better and actually uh, find out uh, what uh, is the geography of our workshop. As far as we are concerned, we have um, participants from uh, practically all over the world, um, from both uh, Latin America, Africa, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, Russia, Europe and beyond. And um, it would be a great kick off if we knew better uh, who are, um, who our uh, colleagues in the room are. Um, okay, yeah, once again, I encourage all the participants to be more active uh, because um, our work should Im implies um, asking questions and responding to them in a very interactive way. So as far as uh, the slide is concerned, we have many uh, cities in India, uh, which is quite interesting. Uh, to discuss later on. Um, um, also, remember, bearing in mind uh, the results uh, that we gained from the survey, 
um, the challenges present in uh, India um, are so multifaceted, even at the regional level, that uh, in our workshop we see it as crucial, um, speaking about that in more detail. Also, uh, certain Russian cities, such as Irkutsk and Moscow, uh, the capital of Indonesia, Jakarta, San Paulo, um, one more city of Indonesia, also Kazan, and the capital of China, Beijing. Um, okay, well, I, I would say we can uh, wait half a minute more in order to get more responses. Um, so yeah, this is the, actually this is the uh, geographic scale of our workshop. And um, we are sure there are a lot more participants coming from uh, other continents as well, um, watching us online uh, on YouTube or via different, uh, other different uh, digital platforms. Okay, so this was uh, actually not a task, but rather uh, an introductory part. And we are moving to the next slide, which will again require your participation. Um, what we, uh, so please do not type anything yet. Uh, I am going to clarify the rules. Uh, there is a question, what notions do you associate with a sustainable and inclusive municipal government? So what we would ask you to do is not just think of any notion that comes to your mind. And I'm not going to give any examples, just you know, to keep it uh, frank, so that the ideas will be only yours. Uh, so yeah, it is not about that much about um, giving any association that comes to your mind, uh, but rather trying to guess what uh, notions would come to the mind of the majority in the room. So, uh, now I would give you one minute or so uh, in order for you to think of the most widespread notion or a number of notions. You are not limited in uh, typing in uh, notions via Mentimeter. Uh, you can see it on uh, your device if you are connected right now. So please think of um, the most widespread notions which might be uh, associated with a sustainable and inclusive municipal government. What would your, colleague, uh, your colleagues uh, in the chamber say if we, uh, for example, if we met uh, offline, if we met at, um, at some venue and had a live discussion? Um, so electric public transport, electric cars and superchargers, an interesting point. Uh, also, one more advice, um, uh, if you permit. Uh, do not, um, so right now, uh, the more time goes, the more answers will be appearing on the screen, but please do not um, focus on them as they have been proposed by someone else. Uh, just um, try to um, keep in mind that uh, in uh, a live format, it would not be that obvious. Um, so we would have uh, a more, uh, we'd have more intrigue in our discussion. Um, one of the aims of this very question is also to uh, um, see from the perspective of others, what features people usually associate with a sustainable and inclusive municipal government. Um, one more aspect I would like to stress right now is also that uh, here we are considering uh, municipal governments only, which means that businesses will come a bit later. Um, so yes, I would give some more seconds in order uh, for this collection to uh, finish up. Um, there are more and more answers uh, popping up uh, on the slide, which makes me extremely happy, thank you. Um, the more participants are engaged, the more 
um, insightful the discussion will be. So please don't hesitate to type any notions that come to your mind and that might probably be shared by your colleagues um, to type them in right now. Um, the uh, entire presentation is designed in a way that our discussion can be fostered to its maximum scale. Um, and uh, the situation uh, where we lack ideas is actually impossible. I do believe so. Um, okay, so many proposals are popping up and uh, I would start going um, just one by one and briefly summing them up. Um, electric public transport. So, okay, let's assume that one of the notions that would come up uh, what with, one of the notions uh, with uh, which a person would come up uh, considering uh, the stated issue is electric public transport or just eco-friendly public transport, low carbon public transport also. Um, all these notions are indeed very inherent. Um, zero emissions and zero waste, probably yes, because uh, industry, like both industries and transportation systems, depend highly on fossil fuels, and it is still um, of great concern in uh, many megalopolises. Urban development, as a notion, as a concept, as um, a, I would even say, as a scientific uh, discipline, um, comes to our minds first. Uh, exactly this cyber secure environment. Uh, yeah, um, uh, from our perspective, it could also deal with uh, smart city technologies. We have already someone who um, sent us a question. Um, it was a question to uh, Mr. Shail Campos from Brazil, mentioned these smart city technologies um, that are installed in, let's say, practically all smart cities around the globe. And cyber secure environment is one of the features that characterizes this development. Internet of Things, again, it refers to smart CT. Um, um, very exquisite, thank you. Uh, converting waste into energy. Well, yeah, the issue of waste management. Uh, it, now, it's interesting to trace how many ideas concerning this very issue have been presented. Uh, proper waste management, again, proper management of energy wastes, uh, garbage management and recycling. Um, we, it seems we have been able to synchronize our minds, which is an extremely um, cheerful uh, synergy. Waste sorting and recycling, again, free green open space places. Um, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't add it to uh, waste management as it is truly a particular aspect of the urban development. Uh, yes, a, a separate idea. Caring uh, of the young, the old and the needy, which definitely refers to the notion of inclusive. Um, waste sorting and recycling, sustainable lifestyle and um, education about SDGs and sustainable development in primary schools. Um, Let's assume it is uh, more about uh, linking these type of notions to raising awareness and educating, educating people. Um, events for engagement of the whole population, working, yeah, again, raising awareness and working with communities. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, uh, right now, I would invite um, my colleague Arseni uh, would stop sharing the screen for a while in order to give um, uh, some little space for a live discussion on uh, on the notions presented. So, Arseni, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Vadim. And I would like to switch uh, to our second aspect of the workshop, and particularly the presentation of uh, the survey results, uh, which uh, have been collected via the survey form. We are still receiving the answers, uh, and I would like to thank all those who participated uh, in the survey for their contribution. I will now share the screen for uh, maybe uh, two or five minutes 
uh, to let uh, Vadim uh, prepare next uh, uh, next intervention, and uh, uh, I'll show you uh, the uh, results of the survey we have. Uh, I hope you see them now. Uh, here they are, uh, the uh, survey results. Uh, they uh, uh, can also be found in the email that has been sent to all those registered for the webinar and workshop. Uh, so I hope you find the link there. And I'll give you uh, one more link uh, of, on uh, the uh, on the uh, this uh, translation later later on. Uh, so if you move to page five, you will see the part uh, sustainable and inclusive municipal governments and business. Uh, this part is uh, uh, the one dedicated to today's discussion. And here we have a lot of very meaningful contributions from our participants. And uh, I will uh, give you uh, the insight of some of them. Uh, here, there are 15 contributions from 15 unique uh, participants. Uh, and there are also uh, some innovative solutions and best practices our uh, participants have uh, shared. Mm, and uh, I have here, first of all, uh, Indonesian participant. Uh, he proposes to implement the obligation to develop environmentally friendly industry, government finance is focused on supporting the uh, acceleration of environmentally friendly industries and supporting uh, changes in types of, bi of businesses that are more environmentally friendly. Uh, Olga Kuzikova uh, from Irkutsk Russian Federation uh, suggested to support non-profit organizations uh, adequate uh, region representation in uh, federal parliament. Mm, then uh, contribution from Mexico, uh, implement a guide service for the choice of household uh, appliances according to the characteristics and budgets, reassess the energy subsidy policy in order not to underestimate its cost and impacts. Uh, from Uganda, the government should not uh, should cut on taxes on products made uh, in Uganda to enable youth to establish their start startups. Uh, then uh, the contribution from Nigeria: local governments should be used as agents in the environmental ma management system in terms of ensuring businesses uh, and comply with numerous sustainable environmental directives. The government should promote innovative business uh, models in order to enhance consumer demand for sustainability. And then uh, uh, the contribution uh, from Brazil, promote uh, gardening spaces in public and private businesses and the government, also increase number of public parks. Uh, the one from Indonesia, Jakarta. Uh, Jakarta is a city that is the center of government and economy. This, uh, um, this makes for great development, but does not really pay attention to natural resources. Uh, things that are now being considered are how to build a green open space in the city, reduce uh, the construction of new buildings and use public facilities. So uh, now let's move on uh, to uh, the uh, uh, presentation of uh, Vadim back, uh, and we will continue with uh, uh, these uh, contributions via the survey form later. I give the floor to Vadim. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Arseni. Uh, and now, um, as suggested in the very beginning, I kindly ask you to um, follow the example of the second slide and uh, provide your notions uh, that might come up, you might come up with uh, regarding sustainable and inclusive business. Let us also bear in mind that um, governments and businesses uh, sometimes find themselves on different sides of um, uh, of the social context, which means that their interests um, do not necessarily coincide and that um, actions taken by uh, municipalities at the local level or by regional uh, entities um, at uh, their respective level or even by uh, the national governments uh, might be uh, both uh, beneficial or um, quite harmful for businesses and uh, it also works 
both ways. Unfortunately, uh, recently we have been um, um, witness, we have witnessed uh, certain cases when the environment was uh, harshly detrimented by um, the um, climate change as well as uh, certain mistakes in um, business management and all this uh, drives us to uh, certain maybe um, insights that sustainable and inclusive business and its role in ensuring that the sustainable development itself is possible and is going on uh, is somewhat different in comparison to that of the government. Um, unfortunately, there are still no notions uh, on this slide. I wonder what the problem is. Um, oh yeah, great. The first two ones are already here. Um, I would uh, ask you, dear participants, to be uh, a bit more swift with proposing the notions here as uh, we are unfortunately limited in time and we still have uh, some other um, um, very interactive slides uh, to discuss with you. Um, it is not going to be all about notions and associations, it is just the beginning. So um, in order to succeed, we need to uh, keep our timing um, within limits, unfortunately. Um, okay, so let us... Uh, let us look at the notions having been sent. Um, the one that considers the environmental impacts. So yes, it might refer to responsibility in a way. Um, even responsibility towards the society where this business actually has a right to get revenue. Uh, creation of local level forums for the small level trades. Um, a, an interesting point, uh, which probably means that um, businesses, despite of our vision on them, also need some space to, uh, to network and to elaborate on the existing forms of communication, reduce carbon footprint in order to be uh, responsible towards the area where they are operating, right? Green public areas and offices. An interesting feature, actually, yeah, um, modern develop, uh, modern urban developers in many capital cities, for example, um, are now resorting to uh, this kind of practice. Uh, so if the space is taking uh, in order to build an edifice, uh, then some greenery must appear on the rooftop or even on the balcony. Um, which is a little step, but we all remember that little steps make up, in the long run, a great grand picture. Corporate social responsibility as a form of actually contributing to the society. Talent recruitment. Um, uh, again, uh, here we can see uh, how important it is to interact with, uh, with the potential, uh, not only with potential consumers, but also with those who are willing to bring their innovations to the table. Um, automated logistics, in order to make things simpler. Uh, crucial economy, sustainable supply chain. Um, circular economy, I guess. Open spaces with various office formats. Um, and um, the first thing that comes to uh, our mind in this case is the agile, the new flexible forms of uh, arranging the uh, workflow, public report, in order to be accountable for, um, in order for businesses to be accountable for their actions, why not promote good investment, um, in maybe even prioritize them, government supported loans for poor people to start new businesses. It is of uh, extreme importance today, as far as the coronavirus um, effect is concerned. Businesses have to support youth initiatives. A great suggestion, investment friendly and environment boosting revenues, uh, donations made by business uh, or to business. Another question arises here. Business could support financially initiatives 
financial initiative financially initiatives of young people um thank you we do hope we rock but it would not be possible without your active participation and extremely a uh, high interest to the campaign so thank you thank you loads strategies for net zero emissions zero management in companies again bringing sdgs uh from the realm of politics right to the office is of um the utmost relevance indeed okay so thank you um let us move to the next slide let us move to the next slide great we have now uh we have now um let's say given a glimpse at what comes to our minds first when we think of sustainable practices implied both in municipal governments and in the offices of uh, small and large businesses and right now uh, we would kindly ask you to share uh, the key problems that uh, sustainable and inclusive initiatives encounter um, in your cities for example when it comes to uh, running a municipal government when it comes to uh, creating new approaches to the urban planning or probably there are a lot of ideas in your city or in the area where you live uh, on how to make businesses more interested in promoting sdgs but again there are certain issues that hamper such a development and do not lead um, as far as it would probably uh, be possible in another situation. Uh, so this slide is essential for both your colleagues and us, uh, the Youth Energy Agency, because uh, we might not be aware of uh, certain problems existing um, around the globe just because we do focus on um, the most uh, burning issues here where in the area where we live uh, but at the same time it uh, might be obvious at a certain point that key problems for us have already been solved somewhere else and just imagine if the synergy would be possible after our workshop so it might sound a bit idealistic but um anyway all great ideas start from scratch and um one of the aims of the of the workshop is actually to exchange not only our positive experience but also to stress the importance of solving problems um Nevertheless, in order to solve any problem, we need to figure out what the problem is. Uh, that is why this slide um, is of great importance uh, for us and for the future work, uh, which I would like to remind you uh, will continue um, quite soon um, with your policy uh, proposals being uh, attentively collected and uh, gently put into uh, the final document, um, which is to be present in October during our flagship event. So I can see some boxes appearing on the slide. Mm, let's start uh, discussing them again in a very swift manner. Low accountability for budget usage um, might be an obstacle. Mm, there is no doubt that uh, financial issues might, and also issues uh, connected with transparency, uh, might lead to uh, to negative effects. Um, improper management of sewage leading to deaths of numerous poor people who are cleaning it. And yeah, here we are facing a social dilemma, uh, since everyone is indeed attracted by the image of a smart city where everyone lives. Uh, a very uh, dignified life. However, uh, certain aspects remain uh, unclear. So whether certain professions uh, still need 
uh, to be supported and in what way they should be supported if they are um, very valuable to the local society. Social issues, lack of dedication to work. Um, here in our view, it all depends on what kind of work you are referring to. Uh, yet, anyway, um, if let's take for example, volunteers. If volunteers, if social activists are not that active, and if they lose, um, and if let's say the government, the local authorities, or businesses uh, residing in these areas uh, lose credibility in the eyes of local activists, they might really be discouraged from uh, continuing uh, their work. Air quality and crowd streams in Beijing. Um, Again, um, environmental crisis, unfortunately, um, has hit us harshly and we are doomed to face new challenges in the years to come. Um, for Beijing, it might probably be one of the uh, largest issues, one of the most burning ones, uh, that, that of, of air quality. Uh, but Beijing is not alone unfortunately, in this uh, struggle. Outdated infrastructure, uh, policy, market, education, awareness, a very brief remark, but a very speaking one. Uh, accountability, courage, and attitude to do. Moscow, traffic jams, we need better logistics. I can relate because I reside in the city of Moscow. Baikal law, um, legal system, contradiction regarding national park borders. Um, Using the privilege of uh, residing in the same country, I might guess it refers to uh, the new series of laws adopted quite recently, and uh, they refer to the um, wood management, to, to the forestry. Um, again, uh, here we have to face the social dilemma, the infamous one, uh, when um, on one side, we have uh, the interests of uh, businessmen, sometimes local governments, and on the other hand, there are um, issues related to sustainability and environment. Low development of green energy suppliers, companies that offer their services and green energy devices, solar panels, wind farms, for example, for citizens and low support for such companies from municipal governments. Indeed, it might not be always on um, among the priorities in the agenda for local governments. Uh, it also very much depends on uh, what geographical area we are speaking about, since um, solar panels and wind farms might be an option for um, a very robust uh, and urbanized area in the global south, whereas in the Arctic, um, in the Arctic, it might be uh, quite a challenging uh, decision. Um, um, so again, we are facing the policy issues here, and uh, right now I would suggest picking. Um, um, any of these problems and uh, letting uh, the person who has typed it in uh, the floor in order to, in one minute or two, elaborate on that in order to explain to the global public why this problem is of great concern for him or her. Uh, so if there are any volunteers, please let us know um, in the chat. Please type that you are willing to speak about the problem you have uh, stressed, and we will give you the floor. Uh, by the way, Vadim, I would like to let you know that in the chat we have one more contribution from a participant. Uh, there was uh, a confusion that uh, we were not able to answer to the last question twice or three times uh, as for the previous one. Uh, that is why they uh, wrote this question, this contribution in the chat. And there is also uh, some right. like to speak as well. Okay, so Arseni, is there anyone uh, willing to uh, speak on the problem? 
Yes, I see Atman Tan uh, would like to speak. And uh, Nifi has uh, typed uh, the question uh, in the chat. Okay, so let us give the floor to uh, one of the participants. Uh, Atman Tan, you can... Uh, yes. Uh, you can make your contribution. Okay, uh, uh, can I speak now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, fine. Uh, thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I thank uh, BRICS Youth Energy uh, Agency and Arseni and Youth Practitioner Ilser Medicine Sir uh, for this wonderful event. And I, I was the one who raised the issue of improper management of sewage like that. Because in India, a lot of people are dying, like a lot of means, like hundreds of people have been died because of the sewage management, because there's no proper method to sewage management in India uh, till I see. So what's the problem is they are getting into the ditch and they are just cleaning that. What happened is a lot of health issues are, a uh, lot of health problems they are facing. And at the same time, like government or municipalities are not taking any necessary step in order to prevent those things. So I consider that problem is like very essential problem because a group of people is only cleaning that and it's the world's most horrible thing is that human waste is cleaned by another human like that. That's what I believe. So they are facing a lot of discrimination, humiliation, at the same time health issues. I feel that, I believe that this meeting will find a solution for that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Atmantan, uh, for uh, your contribution. Uh, we see this problem as a pressing issue for some of the BRICS countries. I believe uh, that uh, some uh, cities uh, uh, as in, in uh, China and Russia that are lower developed uh, have also some uh, problems with this. Uh, from my uh, city, for example, Irkutsk, uh, uh, in Siberia, Russia, I can give you uh, uh, one uh, input. Uh, we have uh, a uh, area an area in our city uh, which uh, uh, has uh, uh, this present issue in the, in any time you come there you see that this problem is has not been solved and the years are going but the problem is not going anywhere uh, and uh, for uh, one more contribution here um, there is a contribution from Nidhi who said that generally uh, governments and uh, businesses in uh, some uh, of uh, the municipalities uh, in BRICS countries are very conservative, they're very conservative and orthodox about input of new ideas and uh, uh, is for us to change this stagnant attitude, he says. Uh, we can, uh, I believe, uh, uh, share this uh, point of view. Uh, because uh, uh, there are a lot of municipalities uh, that can actually do more than they currently do and uh, uh, that can support uh, some existing technologies, some existing startups and businesses uh, in uh, uh, some of the municipalities and uh, uh, cannot see uh, them. Uh, and uh, uh, Nithi would like to give an input as well. Nithi, the floor is yours. Hello everyone, I would like to give a short input if I may. Uh, the first thing I would like to say is that my input was about accountability, courage and the attitude to do. So I would like to give an example for what I see as accountability being an issue. Uh, first, uh, in our city, when they build a road or a street, there are two corporations that are responsible for separate issues. Like if they are building the uh, sewer lines, that is a separate corporation's work and the construction of the road is a separate corporation's work. So when the uh, one corporation will build the road, the other corporation after the bold road has been built will break the road down and build a sewer line through that. 
so the government can only allow building of this road in five years once at least so they are actually fighting each other and telling each other that you are accountable for this and you are accountable for this so they need to interact a little more uh, give uh, each other a little uh, a little coordination they need to uh, bring about a better uh, management of the city and for i also gave another input that was about courage and the attitude to do generally what happens is that the new juniors the youth or anybody who has a great idea who has seen something somewhere and wants to give an input for that the seniors will what they will do they will say that uh, okay if you want to bring this idea into reality you can do all the work that is what happens if a junior is uh, giving you an input it is obvious that it is difficult for them to bring it into reality all of it doing it together only for one person that is dumping of word they undermine the, the idea of that person and thus because one person is doing all the work it gets much more difficult for them to bring it into reality and in the end the attitude to do gets a little behind in our generation thank you thank you very much nikhi uh, and i would like uh, uh, to ask vadim to take the floor now um yes thank you arseni and i would like to thank our participants for um being um so driven by the ideas that they believe are right actually um we unfortunately do not have a lot of time to discuss all the problems uh, being stressed however um anyway thank you for the input uh, you have provided us with it is very crucial in terms of international cooperation to uh, be aware not only of uh, the successful pages of um, our cities nations and peoples but also about uh, be aware of the problems that we are all facing so um i am now going to share the screen once again and um yes go on with the uh, lovely mentimeter um right now um i am going to explain the rules as always uh we have put a uh, quite a simple question how to make municipal governments and business more sustainable and this question might seem simple as we have been discussing it for um, so far for two workshops and two webinars so far um however uh taking into account how many uh viable problems you have just raised and uh, how many um informative notions you have put uh into the uh, joint work uh we uh now consider it as relevant to ask you to vote uh by ranking uh the options presented here on the slide from uh, uh one strongly disagree to five strongly agree um so please you can start uh considering the options and voting now um uh, by the end of the voting procedure um we will immediately gain the results and i hope uh the time permits we will also have a chance to reflect on the results of the voting uh, and um, all in all see uh, what the uh, broader picture of your perception by the end of the workshop is um, we are also curious about um, the shift which might have happened uh, between your vision uh, with which you came to the workshop and um, also to the webinar before listening to our youth practitioners and uh, Mr. Ilso Machin, the mayor of the city of Kazan, and, um, and the moment where we are now, uh, when we have heard um, about a couple of problems existing in one of the BRICS countries and also uh, in Russia. Um, Okay, right now we are uh, 
uh, on the way of obtaining the results. So I encourage you to vote uh, actively and um, uh, providing us with the input. It is quite essential for the uh, future uh, elaborations on uh, the part of the uh, Youth uh, Energy Agency, um, since it is not only a uh, informative tool, uh, but also a very important representative tool. Um, as they say, how the audience thinks, uh, the audience votes. Uh, as far as we can see, um, the first type of practice is supported by practically all, uh, all the voters. Um, then the second option uh, is um, inclined to the positive side. However, it is not that obvious. Um, in terms of raising awareness and sustainable and let's say uh, making sustainable education accessible um, on mass market, uh, you also tend to agree, uh, which is a sign of consensus. Municipalities and businesses should opt for zero waste events. One more option, um, which has gained um, quite a solid portion of support, uh, broader waste management including recycling and biogas. Yeah, you, you can still vote. Uh, the voting is not closed. I'm just going, um, I'm just listing the options one by one in case they are poorly visible from a little device, uh, from a, a little screened de device, broader waste management, support local activism based on local needs um, is of a great relevance, probably yes, and probably no, it's up to you to provide us with your opinion. Regions and municipalities should reassess the existing energy subsidy policy. Um, another option that uh, might be quite interesting to discuss, then we also have stricter policies against fossil fuels based businesses. A very tricky proposal. Um, as, by the way, as for the proposals, we have uh, put these um, options on the slide uh, right after um, analyzing the results of the survey. So um, um, this very um, uh, this very level of discussion is totally based on the survey results, uh, where uh, each of you has taken part. And um, these options actually represent, uh, in a generalized way, uh, the proposals and suggestions you have made. So uh, some of you might have probably recognized uh, his or her suggestion. Uh, and of course, um, don't hesitate to uh, cheer on that because your input has been very important for us while preparing for the workshop. Okay, so uh, let me use my authority to declare the voting, that the voting is closed, closed voting. Thank you, Mentimeter. And yes, let us for less than a minute reflect on the results. Um, the uh, absolute winner is the first option, which is new approach to urban planning. And uh, yeah, from our perspective, it is also um, irrelevant, let us say, uh, to debate whether green zones have their place in cities and uh, local municipalities, rural areas, etc., because uh, greenery is life and uh, every urban policy needs to focus on developing green zones. Then facilitating access to local markets for startups dealing with sustainable development has gained not as uh, high a percentage as we uh, would have would have thought, uh, which is also um, an insightful um, an insightful takeaway for us. Uh, thank you for 
uh, making such a statement, uh, then raising awareness and sustainable education, uh, making it affordable, uh, making it accessible, making it uh, popular within children and youth uh, has gained quite sufficient support. Municipalities and businesses should opt for zero waste events. We have a consensus here. Uh, we do agree that uh, such, uh, such practices need to be praised, need to be recognized and need to be introduced as soon as possible. Uh, broader waste management, including recycling and biogas extraction, 4.4, uh, which is also uh, an indicator of, um, of a solid consensus within the audience. Uh, thank you for being frank and open on that. Support local activism based on local needs. Uh, again, we do agree that such a step would be beneficial and would contribute significantly uh, to uh, sustainable development uh, of municipal governments and businesses. Um, regions and municipalities that reassess the existing energy subsidy policy uh, have gained uh, not more than 3.6 uh, points, um, which means that this very uh, point of the uh, voting agenda on the voting list is quite debatable. Um, and um, the last but not the least stricter policies against fossil fuels based businesses um, has gained 2.9. And to be honest, that was quite, we have anticipated such a response uh, because it is not only a matter of going sustainable right now and today, but also cons considering all the options and all the factors that influence um, the decisions uh, taken by top management. And again, um, as we have already discussed during the workshop, and you have agreed that um, in many areas of the globe, it is still not possible to go fully sustainable, but our uh, task um, as the future generation is to make it uh, as possible, is to make it a very possible practice uh, by the uh, year 2030. And um, the final stage, uh, the final, let's say the ultimate level, congratulations everyone who is still with us, is Sustainable Ideas Bank. Uh, the idea behind, um, uh, behind this innovation uh, emerged when we have been considering different options of um, transmitting your inputs into the final document. And we have found out, um, yeah, thank you, start typing. Um, we have found out that uh, it would be uh, rather fair from our side to uh, let you express your ideas once again in a more uh, brief and um, format with uh, your perspective probably uh, being a bit um, complemented by the knowledge and the experience you have gained during our uh, during the webinars and workshops of our campaign. Uh, so here what is important for you and us respectively, is that um, these ideas uh, will be uh, taken into consideration when drafting the final document for the uh, uh, official event, uh, which is to take place in October. And uh, what is more, uh, we are also looking into the option of uh, sharing the uh, Sustainable Ideas Bank uh, content with our youth practitioners, um, with both those who took part uh, in our webinars um, last week and those who are uh, who have been presenting today, uh, in order for them to give a, a very short yet informative feedback uh, on the suggestions you have uh, provided us with. Uh, so as far as i see there are there is only one box filled up so please do not hesitate to 
uh, even to copy paste your flagship ideas. Um, it is just for us to create um, a virtual, a digital flip chart and um, make it visible um, at the end of the day for everybody in the chamber. Uh, so just perceive it as uh, some sort of, a, of the final reflection of what we have discussed and what we have uh, put under the spotlight. Um, let us look in more detail at what you have suggested again um, via the Sustainable Ideas Bank. In some countries like China, India or Indonesia, we could make some volunteer reward system. Actually, it is a revolutionary idea in a good sense. So thank you for um, suggesting that. Uh, as far as I remember, we have not seen uh, any suggestions like that uh, in the survey results. So uh, sus the Sustainable Ideas Bank is, um, is also about uh, suggesting something new that might just stroke your mind a second ago. Um, like mercenary in some uh, areas where governments and local organizations are assigned to clear and reward uh, free education, subsidy, energy. Great. E transferred and sustainable infrastructure, more public green zones, comfortable city life, effective waste management, accountability, green startup support, uh, primary education based on SDGs and social responsibility. Um, yes. Um, I would also like to highlight that uh, the suggestion uh, that fits into the red box uh, corresponds directly to one of the options presented on the previous slide. Uh, it was one of the options for voting and it elaborates on that. Uh, it makes it concrete and precise, which is, um, uh, which is a great thing to know that our ideas coincide in a way that means that uh, uh, at the international level, whether it is in the BRICS format or in any other format, we uh, do share certain priorities and can uh, act uh, unanimously. Um, one more idea refers to ensuring healthy lifestyle for refugees and internally displaced persons. Um, today, um, such a topic is indeed uh, in the spotlight um, in, in, in international politics. We all know that, uh, we all know what happened on the island of Lesbos um, in Greece um, some time ago. So the uh, refugee issue uh, in uh, the context of sustainable development is um, very difficult to resolve. And it is also a matter of concern for many future studies and probably other workshops conducted by other ourselves or you. Um, innovative Solution Bank and support of them by municipalities. Um, the interaction is indeed irreplaceable. Uh, Part-time jobs and allowances shouldn't be limited to business only. Community works like helping in management, cleaning, maintenance of local vegetation and so on. Uh, Baikal is hyped but poorly managed by government. The law allows some businesses to harm environment and skip examination, but people who live in the central ecological zone are not allowed to collect the trash. Um, we would also discuss that in detail, but unfortunately we don't have time anymore. Uh, thank you for putting these brief um, uh, solutions, problems, and just your observations um, in the Sustainable Ideas Bank. Thank you for adding them to the Sustainable Ideas Bank. Um, it will allow all of us uh, not to lose them, first and foremost, and uh, finally uh, uh, keep, uh, keep track on them. Uh, using the Internet of Things and city management, um, and we could add many other smart city technologies which are on the rise today, develop new centers for ensuring menstrual hygiene for women. 
Um, and it indeed, uh, such a proposal would indeed contribute to the um, gender equality agenda, highly endorsed by the international community. Schemes similar to those applied in social forestry can be used to resolve the environmental as well as social goals of SDGs and help our landscapes flourish. Um, yes, okay. More sustainable urban events on local, municipal and regional level for educational purposes. Um, we could um, sum it up uh, in a way that uh, fostering collective knowledge um, has um, an additional value regardless of, uh, regardless of the key uh, problems existing in the area. Um, it would be highly uh, hyper hypercritical to assert that no er uh, there is an area with no problems at all. Um, and that is why fostering collective knowledge uh, in the era of mass media and uh, info information obesity is so important. Educate a child not to plant a tree but to care for a garden sounds very philosophical um, and um, structured beautifully. Thank you for such a beautiful proposal. Ensuring healthy lifestyle. A, we have already discussed that. Um, okay, so let us call it a day. Uh, I would now close, uh, not voting, but collecting um, your inputs. Uh, anyway, all those who have not added anything to the Sustainable Ideas Bank, uh, it does not mean that your ideas um, and even more, more detailed ideas that you had presented in the survey uh, would be lost, not at all. Uh, we will keep track on them all. And um, actually, this slide, um, the purpose of introducing you to this slide was um, to uh, expose the idea of uh, the creation of Sustainable Ideas Bank. We do hope that uh, it will help us transform the areas where we live and uh, move for the better. Uh, all the changes and all the solutions that you are proposing um, do uh, have a uh, right not only to exist but to be implemented on a full scale. And that is why it is so important to um, uh, keep track on the ideas and um, every time add more. Uh, relevant solutions uh, because um, luckily or unfortunately we live in the world where um, issues of different kind and different nature pop up every day and it makes us uh, it obliges us let's say it is our responsibility to act promptly and uh, bear in mind our own sustainable idea bank every time we deal with an issue uh, with these words being said, um, I would go back to Arseni and thank you all for your active participation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vadim. I would like to thank you from uh, the part of organizers and uh, I hope also from the part of the participants of today's event for moderating this event, for introducing this beautiful and very interesting platform, Mentimeter. It has been very interactive and inclusive and uh, uh, thank you once again from this uh, part. And uh, as for the survey results, uh, you, uh, dear participants, will be able to uh, see them uh, via the link. You have also the feedback form in the chat where you can leave your feedback uh, on the event number two uh, on, sustainable, um, um, on sustainable urban management and business. So uh, there is a link for this Google form. Uh, and uh, I would like to close this uh, workshop number two and invite you all to our uh, offline event, uh, which will be, of course, live streamed on, on October the 16th, uh, which will take place in Moscow. Uh, and uh, we will uh, give you more information uh, later, closer to this event uh, via email form and uh, in, on the website. 
So thank you so much for participating today. Uh, I would like uh, to say goodbye to you all from BRICS Youth Energy Agency and uh, UNMGCY uh, GG7 Youth Constituency. <laughs>